Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel for my second video. If you're new to my channel, I'll go ahead and put a link for my first video down in the description below. Before I get into today's case, I do just want to quickly mention that I'm filming in the middle of the day, so there may be some noises from birds or traffic noises. There's also construction that's happening right outside, so hopefully it's not too distracting. If you're interested in things like true crime, ghost phenomena, historical events... Really? But, as I was saying, if you are interested in that kind of content, definitely consider hitting the subscribe button because that's exactly what I'm going to be talking about on this channel and I am going to be posting weekly videos, so hitting that subscribe button and the bell icon so you can be notified of my weekly uploads. Today's case was really interesting to research for a couple reasons, specifically the relations that it had to recent years, like the 2020 elections. And just in general, learning about a movement that happened in America that was very similar to the Nazis. So buckle up, today's series of events is crazy to say the least. Today's series of events takes place in Los Angeles in 1933, more specifically a neighborhood that's known as Rustic Canyon, which is just west of downtown Los Angeles. Records show that a Jesse M. Murphy owned the plot of land. However, there's now speculation of where that name even came from whether it was a fake name or a nickname of the actual owner. In later years, the property was sold by a Norman in Winona Stevens, and they're the couple that are believed to be the actual owners. Little is really known about Norman and Winona Stevens, but what we do know is that Norman was a mining engineer, and Winona was a heiress to a thumbtack fortune. Yep, <laughs> the little things that you use to hang your pictures on a corkboard or in your wall in your apartment. She was an heiress to those little things. I really feel like that it was so easy back in the day to just invent something and make your fortune. I mean, I guess back then they needed everything that you had an idea for, and today we don't need as much, and so it's harder to make an idea. Anyways. The couple were both sympathizers to anti-Semitic beliefs, and they both also had interest in supernatural and metaphysical aspects of life, and these passions and interests led them to join a group called the Silver Shirts Legion. When Norman and Winona Stevens finally met the founder of the Silver Shirts, William Dudley Pelly, he told them that his mystical powers had foreseen the imminent defeat of the US by Germany and therefore he urged the couple to use their thumbtack fortune and buy and build on a plot of land in Rusty Canyon that was a self-sustaining utopia of sorts and was fit enough for the Third Reich. The full vision of this self-sustaining utopia is kind of convoluted in the sense that there was tons of different building plans with different construction companies and it's kind of unclear whether this was an intentional move for confusing the construction workers and to kind of hide their true intentions, or if this was unintentional because they didn't know what they fully wanted in their self-sustaining utopia. William Dudley Pelly was born on March 12, 1890, and although there wasn't much notable information from his early childhood years, in his early adult years he worked for a newspaper as a journalist and covered the Russian Revolution, which was his first introduction into politics. During his writing career, Pelly found himself going through a couple different periods of obsession, such as occultism or Christian-centered fascism, which at the end of the day led him to not be able to hold a job. This eventually led him to move to Hollywood, where he landed a job as a screenwriter and worked on a couple movies, such as the 1923's silent film The Shock. But although he left behind a pretty respectable IMDb, he didn't find the success that he was looking for and eventually left that career behind as well. Pelly reached a major breakthrough in personal fame in 1928 when he wrote an article for the American magazine titled Seven Minutes in Eternity, and essentially this article just talked about his near-death experience and communications that he had with Jesus, and then his eventual return back to Earth with his newfound spiritual knowledge. And after the success of that article, Pelly found himself jumping right back into his writing career and writing weekly newsletters to the newfound following. And by the early 1930s, his far-right views were starting to merge with his views on Nazism and white nationalism. By the end of 1930, Pelly had released his book called No More Hunger, which was essentially his version of Mein Kampf. 
and if you don't know what that is, that is Hitler's book, which was released shortly before World War II, and mapped out his hopes and dreams for Germany and eventually the world. Similarly, in No More Hunger, Pelly talked about a Christian commonwealth, which all Christians would have a piece of America, kind of like a corporation, and there would be a set income, so no white Christian would be without a necessity. And also within No More Hunger, he talked about a single city in each state, which would allow Jews to live freely. But however, how this city differed from the others was the Jews' resources and assets would be controlled by the government. Many view the release of No More Hunger as the start of the Silver Shirts Legion, and that's because shortly after the release, the Legion was created. And between the years of 1930 and 1936, Pelly continued his newsletter and just continued to grow his following. And essentially, that's why he asked the Stevens in 1933 to start building the self-sustaining utopia. Membership to the Legion was essentially open to anyone who wanted to join. And that was so long as you were willing to pay the dues, which was a $10 annual fee and $6 for the uniform, and also as long as you met the requirements. There was quite a substantial list of requirements to join the Legion, which included disclosing your financial information, telling the exact minute and hour that you were born, any military experience. Inductees were also required to be very familiar with some of the writings of Pelly, including No More Hunger and The President Knows. Uniforms of the Legion consisted of silver shirts, go figure, they were called the silver shirts, and they also wore red L's on the front of their left pocket, which stood for liberation from materialism, loyalty to the USA, and loyalty to the Legion itself. At its height in 1935, there was roughly over 15,000 Americans that were considered part of the Legion, or at least a sympathizer of the Legion, where they would buy articles and different things, but not necessarily fall into the $10 annual fee of becoming a Legion member. In 1936, Pelly actually ran for United States president and eventually lost the election. But what's funny is he started spewing fake news about um, a rigged election, essentially, because of fake ballots, which sounds very familiar. Between the years of 1936 and 1942, Pelly was starting to realize a major decrease in the Legion's following, and also at the same time the FBI was keeping a very close eye on them, and by 1942 he was arrested on 12 counts of high treason, and then shortly after the bombing of Pearl Harbor, the whole Legion was just dissolved altogether. By the time Pelly was released in 1950, eight years after he had been arrested, he had already released about two dozen books, and they were all on this new mystical doctrine, Soulcraft. Soulcraft teaching centered around a mixture of theology, Christianity, Jainism, spiritualism, other Hindu elements, and he also promoted the idea that humans had a interstellar origin, and all of this benign type of fraud continued until he died on June 30th, 1965, at the age of 75. Soulcraft teachings can still be found today online, and I'll put a couple links of the things that I found down below, but just a warning, it is a little confusing. It goes all over the place with different teachings and theories and yeah. I also feel like it went between third person and first person, so just a forewarning if you are interested in reading it. Norman and Winona Stevens remained on the property in Rustic Canyon for a good eight years after the demise of the Legion, although they were not living in the luxurious mansion that they were hoping to by that time. They were just living in a garage type building on the property. In 1948, the land was sold to the Huntington Hartford Foundation and it remained in their ownership until the early 70s when Los Angeles County claimed ownership and turned it into a artist community. And shortly after that, California State Parks claimed ownership, turning it into a hiking trail for locals, which now is known as Murphy's Ranch. Today, you can still hike Murphy's Ranch and see some of the ruins that are still there. Although, in 2013, California State Parks did not claim ownership due to liability of the property. And in 2015, a 
group of beautificators, beautiers, people went in and leveled out some of the buildings, cleaned up some of the graffiti that was on there from the artist times. If you love hiking and you are in the Los Angeles area or you're going to be in the Los Angeles area, I definitely recommend looking up this Murphy's Ranch Trail. However, there is two, so make sure that you're looking at the one that's in Pacific Palisades. And just so you know, it is not for the faint of heart. I am an avid hiker and I was barely finishing the hike. It was intense. There is a section that is all stairs, very steep down the hill into the canyon. And if you don't do it the right way, you're going to be going up those stairs back to your car. So just a forewarning, if you are not a avid hiker, you probably want to skip this one out. But that's going to be it for me today. I hope you enjoyed today's video and possibly even learned something new. If you did enjoy today's video, definitely hit the like button. And if you want to see more of my content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button because I am going to be posting weekly videos very similar to today's historical event. So it's going to be weekly videos of historical events, true crime, ghost phenomena, and more. And if you want to be notified of my weekly posts, you'll have to hit that bell icon because YouTube does not do a good job at sending out notifications for new videos but I really appreciate all of your support on my new channel and I look forward to seeing you next week. <laughs>